done each of it. Yeah, it's been like a month. We've been on the road a lot. Wait, since Christmas, a little... Since uh, Christmas, right. Christmas time. Right, we'll let people have, have some time off over the holidays. Well, welcome to eChurch Live. It's Tuesday. It's uh, January 21st. 2019. And tonight we want to talk about a topic that comes up a lot. This is a this is something that uh, people have questions about uh, quite often uh, because we talk so much about the perfect love of God, that the love of God without conditions. And <clears throat> so a lot of times people's minds go to, um, uh, well, what do I do with hard people, mean people, maybe people that are abusive towards you in some way, uh, toxic people, they 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 may sometimes be called. It's a good good question. Yeah, it is because Christians want to people want to they want to do the right thing. Of course of course we all would agree, you know, that what the word says about love and love is the uh, is the perfect way and, and you know it's the one command, if you will, of the new New Testament. Uh, but uh, people have been in relationships where, um, you know, the people were just, they were controllers or they were takers or they were, uh, you know, uh, not, healthy. Not, not healthy, not yeah. healthy. And, uh, and so they got up the strength to leave that situation and they are better for it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so a lot of times when we talk about unconditional love, we, we define it as a love that, you know, First Corinthians 13, you know, it, it never quits, you know, it, uh, it endures all things, it bears up under anything and everything, and, and we talk about that, and so people say, but, but what about those relationships, you know, it, what about, aren't we supposed to make healthy boundaries? Uh, first of all, um, we're, we're not talking about uh, this tonight, we're not talking about physical abuse, that to me is a no-brainer. Don't let anybody hit you. Don't let anybody physically harm you. Get away from that and love love people from long distance if you have to. But 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 never ever <laughs> put it with it. And that's a that's a thing too. Is you can always you can love people from long distance. It can be done um, uh, if they are abusive. <clears throat> but what we talk about a lot in this is we've noticed. Um, how how we've grown in situations. I could just tell you one of my own experiences, and and I've had to, um, uh, you know, in my past, more often, I, uh, there were some situations, some relationships that I uh, had to separate, put a separation yeah. there because it was just. Uh, I'm thinking of, of one person that was always controlling and always trying to control me and always trying to put me under their heel and somehow, and I, I always had to be. I always had to be the underling in the relationship somehow, and I didn't didn't like that, didn't appreciate it, and it wasn't a good. Uh, it's not a good dynamic to have with a with a person, and so I made that uh, separation. We made that separation, and uh, I felt bad about it. And I said, you know, Lord, I really want to love like you do. I really want to. I don't because even though we made that separation, and uh, that probably still was the the, the, the thing to do, uh, I felt. I just felt yucky towards this person about it. I couldn't couldn't seem to get over it. And I was talking to the Lord about it, and this was many many years ago. And he said, "Here's what he he did. He said, son, I heard this so clear inside me. He said, son, you're going to grow in uh, in my love so much that the things that other people don't other people do won't affect your soul negatively." Now. That I, that situation, I didn't get. I didn't start feeling better immediately about that situation. In fact, it took a while. Um, he didn't just fix me up right then. He just said, "Son, you're going to grow." Mm -hmm. He just gave me some hope to tell me that you're going to get better with these things. And um, and also, he didn't, you know, tell me say, "Well, you know, you know, you know what my word says: walk in love. Just walk in love. Love them like like you're supposed to." You know, he didn't do that. He didn't demand that I do a commandment towards this person. He just, he's so good. He's so patient. You know, he's so all, all about us. And he knows our friend. He just said, son, you're going to grow to where the things that other people do won't affect your soul negatively. And, uh, and so what I noticed over time was that, you know, I look back and just, it was like within that same year that I, I noticed I started changing towards this person. And uh, next time I ran into this person, I honestly felt 
much better inside. I didn't feel that yuckiness, uh, you know, about towards that person that I did. And so, uh, you know, the person had not changed as far as I knew, uh, um, but it didn't matter so much to me. I had become somewhat bigger inside to where I wasn't intimidated by it and I wasn't put off by it so much. I felt mm -hmm. big enough to go ahead and, and, and love, the, love, love the person. Um, um, we never got back together and had a, had a, had a relationship, but the inside is what we're, what we're talking about. How we, you know, there's a lot of people that just won't have us, um, but we don't have any, anything ought, ought towards them. We, we love them. Mm -hmm. And so, so what happens is that there's growth. And uh, this is what we want people to know is that, is that uh, you know, as we're growing, sometimes we find ourselves having to do what we have to do in the situations the best that we can. But our encouragement is always that we are growing. There is so much for us to grow into and we're growing in the love of God. And I can testify that, that you can grow to the place to where things that once seemed so big and harmful to you don't have that power anymore. That's sort of our encouragement in it. We don't want to condemn anybody for doing what they have to do in relationships um, because the love of God is really, it's its not really a command toward to us. It's not a command only because a command does not give us the power to do it. The love of God is something that's given to us. It's something that's, that's offered to us and given and, and therefore we receive it. And so it's something that we take into ourselves. In fact, if you don't, if, if, if you're not being fulfilled by this love that I, 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 I talk about so much because it has done that to my heart and changed so many things. Um, if you're not being fulfilled by that, I'm not demanding that you operate perfectly towards everybody. You can't do it. You really can't. Uh, you know, I've, I've learned over the years in ministry, rather than demand that people line up with the word, um, let them get the one thing that empowers us, and that's the fullness of God. And, and Ephesians says uh, for us to know the love of Christ so we can be filled with the fullness of God. Uh, I preach on the love of God a lot, but I don't say, now my word to you is not go out and try to love everybody. My word to you is live loved by God. Yeah. And what I find is that takes care of itself, and that takes care of the questions. Mm -hmm. Theologically, these things can always be, be, be debated. And people can have their valid reasons for, for you know, stating one stand or another, one side of the stand or another. But I can just tell you from, from experience that there's a growth. And in all of our growth, we get better and better. You know, just like um, there were habits that used to get the best of me. But you grow bigger. And they seem so small now. There were situations that used to terrify me. But as you grow, they seem so nothing now, just because we grow in God and we get, and we, and we get bigger. So, um, so I'm not telling people, you know, not to do what they feel they have to do in these relationships for your peace of mind. Uh, I'm just telling you that the good news is that we get even better. And so we grow in it and we get to where we find that we really don't have to protect ourselves anymore. That's the word. Because we get so fulfilled, so so big inside, so big in God, uh, that we we're we're not we're not so vulnerable to what other people do. We're not so susceptible to be uh, damaged by the things that happen to us in the world around us. We become big enough to be the lovers and the blessers, and that's the beautiful thing about this love. You know, we just we just um, celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day Monday. And if you ever read, you know, uh, many of his sermons, there are many excerpts that are just, just amazing. When he talks about love, he nailed it when he would talk about love. For instance, how, you know, uh, you know, you can't ever change somebody by hating them. You can't make them better by hating them. Only love can do that. Right. Um, uh, uh, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only love can do that. And he would talk about a love that was bigger than what man normally could do or understand. Because he knew that that was ultimately what it's going to take to fix the world's ills. And while he made a, a lot of great advances, there's still a lot of, of, of things that need to be 
uh, worked out because there's still a lot of perfect love that people need to find, and that's only found in God. Uh, so that's why we talk about, you know, we don't give commands. We don't demand that you stay in an abusive relationship. We don't demand that if somebody wants to be, you know, mean and ugly to you all the time, that you have to put up with it in the name of love. What we, what we do encourage is that you find out how much God loves you. And you'll just find out that the world is able to hurt you less and less and less. And that's our answer for that. Because I think people feel like when we talk about this love, sometimes they feel a pressure on them. Well, it's almost like it brings up a defensiveness. Uh, but I, I think because they feel a condemnation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the truth is, for, for a long time, I did learn boundaries in a sense that I learned that I didn't have to let everybody hug me who wanted to hug me. You know, I didn't right. have to do... And that, that was maturity in, for me in that time. But I guess the point is to not stay there. To that, that, that's not the end where you just build walls around yourself and pro, be self-protective. The end is that, like you say, you're so big that you can be around people and not be adversely affected by their... Yeah, what's you know what's the scripture that uh, that we that we uh, like to uh, refer to in the Bible? It's, it's it's actually from the Message version about keeping open house. Yeah, that people can see how 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 big how great your and how, your God is. Yeah, how gracious God is because yeah. of your welcoming. And uh, you know, here's another uh, example um, uh, about that. You know, many years in the '90s, you know, and I was pastoring uh, a church during all those times, and. Uh, you know, our daughters were raised up with us. We homeschooled them. They were in the office with us during the day. They were, they were in people's homes when we would go visit, you know, and heard every conversation that ever went on. And they saw all the politics and the things that went on. These were, these were kids. And one of them, you know, asked me one time, you know, after, after a situation where it seemed like someone had betrayed us again, and they had seen this happen once in a while, because uh, it just happened. It does happen. We're, we're, people are not perfect. We're dealing with an imperfect world and imperfect people. That's why it, 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 there needs to be a lot of love. But um, uh, one of the one of the, 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 the daughters said, "How you know? How can you trust somebody anymore? You know, when when the, when you see these things happen and people do this to you, why would you trust trust anybody?" And uh, and I said, "You know." Well, we could protect ourselves and make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, and by the way, I have, I, I've seen people, I've had friends that have chosen, people in ministry even, that have chosen to do that because they just said, you know, they just come up with the idea that, you know, a pastor just can't get too close to the people because they'll use you, they'll abuse you, they'll betray you, they'll, they'll expose, you know, your secrets and, 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 and things. And, and, uh, and it does happen sometimes. And uh, so, you know, I said... We could protect ourselves and make sure that never happens. We can just make sure we don't get too close to people. We can make sure we don't show people all of ourselves and all of our cards. You know, we can be very protective of ourselves and just be so, you know, uh, protect ourselves and box ourselves in so much that nobody will ever get to us and hurt us like that again. I said the option, the other option is that we can go ahead and keep our hearts wide open. Yeah. And, and that's the riskier option, or it looks like it is, because... Your doors are wide open for people to come in to get close to you, and people can. With people that get close to you are the ones that can hurt you. Yeah. Uh, and I said, but we choose that mm -hmm. because if we put up a, a protection around us, that protective barrier will become our own prison, and it'll keep us from ever growing any bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And we'll always be protectors of ourselves, mm -hmm. and we'll always be afraid, and we'll always be suspicious, and have some some degree of paranoia. And we'll, we will lose all the beauty of relationships and, and, and uh, you know, all the fun that there is with these imperfect people. So I said, we're going to keep our heart open. And I said, and will somebody hurt us again? Probably. Will we ever get stabbed in the back again? It's very likely. It can happen. I said, but, but God is always with us. And just like every other time, if somebody, you know, sticks me in the back, God will raise me back up again the next day because it happens every time. So when you're, when you're secure in God, you're not afraid of being hurt because 
as you grow, you find out that the hurt doesn't hurt so much anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole lot better than, than boxing yourself in and being afraid. And that's why the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. It just, the love itself does that. Yeah. We don't make ourselves walk in love. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. We can't do that. So I'm not. I, we don't demand it from anybody. Yeah. But what we do say is that there is a love from someone who's a person who loves, who loves you, who cares about you, who wants your best, and who knows your best, and who's with you and never leaves you because he's in, chosen to be in union with you. Uh, I can guarantee you that there's uh, there's an everlasting love, and he doesn't put up walls around us when we accuse him of things when we. When we, you know, abuse his love, and we've all been guilty of it in some ways or, or another, and uh, he didn't have to protect himself from us. And what we're saying is that's the kind of love, that divine supernatural love that, has, that comes into our heart that takes us beyond what our own strength or weakness can do in these relationships. Am I making any clarity in, yeah. in any of these uh, things that we're saying? Are there any other comments? I, I really want to know, you know, uh, other people's perspectives on this and uh, situations uh, because this is, I know this is something that comes up a lot. And so the two things, we want there to be no condemnation because mm -hmm. there just is none. <laughs> no, there's no condemnation in growing, in our growing and trying to learn this thing. We're all trying to walk this thing and as believers, you know, most of us, I believe that we're trying to do this the right way. We're finding our way with God and learning, uh, learning Him, learning our relationship with God and, and, uh, and growing. And that's an exciting thing. So there's no condemnation uh, because there's no demand put on you. God does not demand that we love. He gives us love. Right. And, and He knows that that love is the power that has all of these wonderful uh, empowering effects. So Eddie here is saying, great explanation of growing, Rick. I call these grace growing pains. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and they are, and they're, they're sweet pains, you know, if you, if you realize what they're, what's, what's going on. It's like those situations I was in. You know, somehow that word, when God said, you're going to grow so that the things that other people do won't affect your soul negatively, that was such a comforting word. It still didn't fix how I felt about that person at the time, but eventually it would. Yeah. And then, and when you grow, see, this is why growth is better than deliverance. Because, you know, God can wave his hand and boom, you feel better all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But deliverance is something that I might need again when it happens again. Yeah. But when you grow, then you don't need that again because you're a different person now. Yeah. And now when something like that happens, it is nothing like what it was 20 years ago. Yeah, it's, a, it's the weaving of his ways into, into you. Into us. And, and it's a beautiful thing. You don't lose that. That, that grows. And yeah, that's why it. we tell people, celebrate the growth. However slow or fast it may be, you know, I, I celebrate the growth. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't cry out. I don't demand. I don't have, my soul does not have to have the instant everything right now anymore. Because we've got God now, and He's loving us in our situation, and He's He's caring, He understands, and He knows how to get us into better. Hmm. Connie said, "Live loved." <laughs> yes, that's right. Live loved. Well, and yeah, that's that's your homework. That's that's if if I can give any command, you know, <laughs> that would be the one <laughs> to, yeah. to live loved, and so th that's why. No matter what people say, there has not been too much talk about the goodness of God, the love of God. There, there is no overbalance in that which is perfect. Mm -hmm. That which is perfect is that perfect love of God. Now, there can be an overbalance of human love, how humans define it. But, the, but God's love, there's no such thing as too much. Yeah. All that, we don't see too much of God's love anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there's no such thing. Uh, that's too much. And, and you say to me sometimes too that that's why we preach what we do is just to have that ever in front of you that God is good, that God loves you, that that love is a a powerful force in the world. You have to know that. Good. But the sad thing is, is when you're saying it and people hear feel condemned by and we the, don't want the, that at all. the very good. Good news, right? 
So uh, why do people get... Well, Jesus said, you know, you, 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 because you don't believe, you're condemned. And so, uh, you know, a lot of it, you know, if we don't believe in that kind of love, uh -huh. then we don't see that much hope. So we figure like we're just, we're doing what we got to do and whatever I'm doing is the right thing and don't make me feel bad about it. Yeah. Um, that's true it's sort of a defense yeah it's a, uh, it's a defense because we want to we want to do it right we want to be know that yeah. we're doing it right and we don't want somebody telling us we're doing it wrong and we're not we don't do that we're um, you know even if people sometimes you can say say blue and they hear red yeah you know that's just what what way it goes yeah. um, but you know that's what we so each church is a good time to really try to clarify things, yeah. especially a little one-line Facebook blurb. You know, yeah. everybody can argue with those because yeah. <laughs> they're so incomplete. Yeah. <laughs> but but we do want people to know it's that it's helpful that, to talk it through because there's a lot of layers to it. There's a lot to it when you talk about love uh, because most people are familiar with the human kind of love, which there's all kinds of flaws in mm -hmm. that. But when you read First uh, Corinthians thirteen you really get a great definition or uh, yeah, it's picture, a wonderful picture of what God's love really looks like. It keeps no record of wrongs. You know, it's, it's, it's patient. It, it's kind. So when we're saying God's unconditional love is the better way, that is the better. Yeah, and, and here's something else about because this 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 is... Part B of when you say, why do people feel that condemnation? Because, for instance, 1 Corinthians 13, many people read that and they feel like that the Bible is saying, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Now go try to do that. Yeah. Try yeah. not to keep any record of wrong. Try not to seek your own. Try not to, you know, you know do all, all these things. And that's not what it is. That's describing the perfect love, God's love. That's describing how He is. And of course, now he's a part of you and I. So Romans says that love has been shed in our heart, really. So therefore, it's telling us what we have. Yeah. But it's not it's not demanding that we do. It's telling us what we have and how it is, and what and and you know it's describing that that love of God. But people people feel condemned because it, there's so much of the mentality of we do. You mm -hmm. know, like we're the hero here. We got to do it. We got yeah. to make it happen. We got to live up to this. Um, you know, this whole idea of living up to a standard. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's, it's like the Vietnam War. There's no winning that. You can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You, uh, we were recently watching a documentary yeah. about the Vietnam War. <laughs> and you get into that, there's no way, there's no place of victory in that because you can't live up to that standard. Mm -hmm. That's why love is the only standard, and, and God is the only one that had that love mm -hmm. to give, and He gave it to us. And what's beautiful about it, and the reason we're so in love with the love of God, is because it changes us. Mm -hmm. It does what we couldn't do. Yeah. It, 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 it allows us to have the capacity to love when we couldn't love, yeah. and to forgive when we couldn't forgive. It just starts happening. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's powerful. It is so, so powerful. Yeah. It's, it's not a formula that you can work. I mean, Never. I remember when I was uh, in a ministry, in a ministry experience where I was really struggling to love the people I was with. And I would pray, uh, God, well, help me that love. That ever in ministry. Yeah, help me love these people. And I would just read that chapter over and over again. But, you know, the truth is, I never connected that love in a relationship yes you know with God I just saw it as something I had to do I had to get it I had to you know that's what the flesh loves a formula the flesh loves a you know if I read this a hundred times maybe it'll get in me but it's it's really engaging in a real relationship mm -hmm. with love with God that's who, exactly who is what it love. Is. And you learn it. And you know, whenever you share um, experiences with God, I feel the love of God. Like He's when, always loving, isn't he? To you, yes. But, well, he is to me too. He, but like, I really hear it in your examples. Like um, this one time where you were trying to change change the brakes, or yeah. you were changing something yeah. in your car, Something and you were getting frustrated. Right. And 
And then he just said, try this, son. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just so, so loving. He's so patient. He's so loving. He's so kind. First Corinthians 13, love is patient. Love is kind. Yeah. That's God. That's, that, that's talking about God there. It's also the His more nature. mature way, isn't it? The, 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 the better way. It's, um, you know. Uh, it is maturity. Yeah. It is maturity itself. The perfect love of God is maturity. And as we learn him, growth in him or maturity, spiritual maturity in God actually is knowing him who is love. And there again, I can't uh, say this enough, that love, it really does the automatic changes. Yeah. It doesn't say God's love tells us to get rid of fear. It says it drives it out or it casts it out. It moves the fear out of us. And then you, you look around and you're like, I used to be so afraid of that. What happened? Mm -hmm. You grew in love. Mm -hmm. you, became, you became more secure. The things that once scared you don't scare you so much. And the things that once hurt you don't hurt you so much. Mm -hmm. So... There's a lot of things we do as we're growing that work that that are expedient for us, maybe temporarily, but we're always growing, mm -hmm. and that's the good news. And in this growth, you know, we you talk about the interactions with the Father. You know, as a younger Christian, I used to say, "Oh, I'll tell you what, God hollered at me yes last night, or He really took me to the woodshed." You know, I'll tell you what, you know, God got the switch after me. You know. And honestly, you know, when I look back years later, I thought, he never did that. He's never, he's never been anything but patient, good, kind, understanding, helpful. <laughs> he's never given me a harsh word, honestly. Um, he's love. And yet he's power, all power. Yeah. And, I, and, 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 and we want people to know it because people... We keep, we keep feeling like we can do this. We keep feeling like if you give us the command, we'll try to live up to it. And, uh, well, once you learn that that's a, that's a dead end, you, you get out of that and just live love. And live with no condemnation. Yeah. I know it's scary. Yeah. But it's God. Yeah. And you're going to be misunderstood. and You know, because we, you know, and I was part of that, that world that said, no, that's too, that's, too, that's greasy grace. That's that. Sloppy agape, you know, no, 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 no. Well, there are going to be some sloppy people that do sloppy things, but there's the real. Mm -hmm. And uh, the real has the powerful effect that changes, changes the inside of you. And uh, I say, let the love do the work. Yeah. Enjoy the love. Enjoy the relationship with God. Just enjoy it, wherever it is. Enjoy it today, and wherever it's at tomorrow, enjoy it. And then let it build, because that's what relationships do, right? Mm -hmm. When you're getting to know someone, which is what, what you're doing with God, you, the relationship builds. Mm -hmm. You get a bonding. Pretty soon you start learning more of his, his personality. Yeah. You start learning more of his, 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 his flow and his ways. And pretty soon you're feeling what he feels about other people. Pretty soon you feel... As big as he as he as he feels, pretty soon you see things the way he sees yeah. them because you're yeah. you're melding in this relationship. He's weaving his ways yeah. into your soul. The other thing is is that he's not you're not using this love to then change the Thank abusive you. person. Right. So I think some people are like, well, that didn't work. Yeah, Why I tried love and it didn't work. <laughs> so now what do I do? So it's not there <laughs> to to manipulate another mm. person or even try to transform another person. That That's totally in God's... And most of the time when know. people say that I tried love and it didn't work, what they, what they mean is I tried being nice. Mm -hmm. Being nice is not necessarily love. Now, love has nice in it. <laughs> yeah. But just being nice is not love. And lots of people can be nice yeah. in certain situations till it doesn't work, right? <laughs> <laughs> But it's not something we try. It's not, it's a, not tool a tool that we get to yeah. make somebody do something we want them to do. Love is something that we receive yeah. that makes us complete so we're not needy anymore. I have a, a comment from Murray. I thought that it was a good comment. He says, we were so obviously designed to receive and to give love. Absolutely. But the voices that pervert that into a standard to live up to are loud and numerous. Mm -hmm. 
which is why we want to keep talking. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's <laughs> why to offset those voices. That's why there's not too much talk about grace and love. And we, and we that's very true. Yeah, you say that, it's not so much we're trying to fight those voices. We're trying to give more of the good. Uh, yeah, we acknowledge true. the good. We don't put a lot of focus on the other stuff, but it's but we know that it's true. We've all come from that to where, you know, we've had to. Uh, for many of, of of us, it was kind of a struggle to even believe how good God was because of all the other voices. The yeah. Bible says there are many voices in the world. Yeah, but we have one Father, <laughs> yeah. and uh, and 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 the voices are so so much. They're fleshly voices. They're in our own thoughts and belief systems, you know, for a while. Yeah. And they're in other people's thoughts and belief systems. Therefore, they're taught mm -hmm. and often taught from the pulpit. And, and I did it, guilty as anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and and those voices come and they, they, even though we'll say we're saved by grace, we still try to pressure ourselves and others to live up to a better standard. And yeah. we think... And we're totally deceived in this because we thought that that we needed that pressure of having that that standard, or else nobody nobody would follow God, nobody would serve nobody God, would care. Nobody, nobody would care. care. Yeah. They would all it would be anarchy and it would be Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not what I found. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want that. I didn't want to live like that. Right. When God first showed me about His perfect love, I just thought, God, that scares me. You know, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to be some some hedonistic sinner. You know, right. <laughs> by just accepting this love without any requirement from me. You know, um, but it became so real and so big in front of my face that I re I received it, and I just said, Okay, I'm just going to take this. <laughs> and I found out I didn't become a, a hedonistic sinner. I, I finally got free of so many of the selfish things that were holding me back in the first place. Yeah. So Eddie's saying, yes, love weaves in security. Thanks for doing this. Very encouraging. Good. I'm glad this is a blessing. We really uh, want it to be. There's so much to understand about this. It yeah. touches every area of our lives. And yeah. it does the touching. Yeah. That's the good thing about this is that it's not a demand on us. That There's not a demand for us to... To, uh, to walk in love. Wherever those admonishments are, are it's, real, it's, it's all about reminding us what we have, mm -hmm. reminding us that we're loved, yeah. that we love the brethren because he loves us. Yeah. This is a good um, comment by Beth. She said, you know, I was thinking earlier about listening to CDs of the Bible where actors are narrating the Bible, and they often interpret the voice or tone of Jesus as hard in places mm -hmm. and condemning the more I get to know him, the more I realize that is wrong. His voice is everything love is, without condemnation and full of peace. That's a good point. I often wonder also, even about some of the punctuation in the Bible, like, you know, when Jesus is, like, even when he's talking to the Pharisees, you know, he says, you're hypocrites. You don't enter into the kingdom and you don't let anybody else, and you put heavy weights on people, and you, and, and he could have just as easily looked at them with just love and compassion and said, you guys are hypocrites. He says, you guys are not entering in. And therefore, nobody else is entering in because of you. And he says, and what you're doing is you're putting heavy burdens on people. It doesn't mean that he was spitting and foaming at the mouth, you know? <laughs> it's got yeah. the impression that, that I would get sometimes. I, I, we've actually talked about this before because I've often wondered why certain people read it one way and another person sees it completely different. Like, for instance, when Jesus gets mad in the temple... So many people see that as Jesus having a fit, like really just like losing his cool. And, and uh, I've also heard it taught that he, it was a teaching illustration, mm -hmm. it that it was totally, a demonstration mm -hmm. of... Uh, he, he, it was totally premeditated. That's what I teach, and that's where, where I can see it. I can prove it in the Word. Um, but I also used to see it the other way. Yeah. And I, honestly, <laughs> not to put an indictment on any of us, but... but I, honestly, it's it, you know, it seems that that instance is when people want to be angry with someone, they pull that that Jesus in the temple real quick. Yeah. Because we got that one example yeah. where it looks like Jesus, you know, had had so much hate or anger, so they use that as for the example uh, that it's okay for them to be that way. Yeah. Well, two things. Number one, um, he didn't just 
get upset and throw a fit. He was doing a teaching thing. He was actually doing a, a premeditated teaching, using that situation to, 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 to teach and to show really what he was about to do with his death and resurrection. Another thing, that situation is one little line out of all these things in the Bible. So, so, so it, it, even if it were an outburst of anger, it's such an anomaly. It's such a small blip on the whole screen of the mm -hmm. Gospels that we read. But, you know, but a lot of times this is used by people that are mad half the time and half the people. <laughs> yeah. but, but anyway, that's what that, we see it differently because just because of our mindset yeah. that we're coming from, you know. I also wonder too, as a child, you look at your own earthly father with a little bit of like, mm -hmm. but as you grow and get to know him, you, your heart gets to be more at ease or you, you realize, you know, his love for you. His, mm -hmm. You see, you being. see his heart and, and there again, the voices and why, why we, we, we interpret things about God in certain ways that aren't necessarily correct. Um, we, we were all we were raised by earthly fathers, who loved us in a fatherly way. Maybe in many cases, some people didn't have that, but um, and they did the best they could, maybe. But it was it's still in the world system, and it's a merit system, right. it's a punishment and reward system, right? Even the best of our daddies, they used the merit system, the punishment and reward right. system. Our schools used the merit system, mm -hmm. the punishment reward with the grading system. Our jobs used it. Yeah. With, with promotions and raises or, or suspensions or, you know, different things, disciplinary things. And we're totally immersed in that merit, punishment, reward system. Yeah. So our only assumption is that God is that way too. Right. And, and you think that until you get to know him. You know, we were, I was preaching about Job a week or two ago and you know, Job was a good man, very devout, and was really living a good, upright, moral life. But, you know, finally, later on, he says, you know, I only knew of you through the hearing of my ears, but now I see you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I repent. I change my mind. <laughs> it really shows you what a miracle it is that we can see outside of that flesh system that we were trained in. It, it is know, a miracle. It's a miracle. That's <laughs> only, only the Holy Spirit in us could do that. That's why and Jesus I, said, it's better that I go. You've got to have me in you. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'll tell you, it feels so good that it's it's like you can never go back to that. You can't because it's woven into you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a just, part of you it's now. Just, none of that is attractive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're just like... Good luck with that. Huh? It becomes Obviously. one with you, and that's where the heart changes take place with yeah. this with this growth. So Glenn is listening, and he says, so faith activates it? I mean, trusting that God will do it in us? Question? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, it does, because, you know, faith is, is, is uh, faith receives it. Well, it's believing what you're seeing. What exactly does he mean by that? What, what do you mean? Does faith activate what? Faith activates that love of God, that receiving. Oh, it's, okay. That's why it's always about the receiving by faith. And so that's why if you're struggling with, with the love of God, then put your attention on the truth of this and look at look in the Word of God and, 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 and do a, a study and a meditation and, 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 and put a focus on on, on where the word talks about the love of God, the goodness of God, and all the things that entails. And then what happens in that is somewhere along the line, something happens, and it's by the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says that we're, we're delivered or saved through grace, uh, through faith by grace, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. And so, you know, the faith to believe in these things that are unbelievable, you know, is a supernatural thing. But it happens somehow in this. Yeah. Um, kind of like Moses said, I saw this bush that burns, and I'm going to go turn aside, and I'm going to go look at this thing now. Yeah. You know, and when he did, he saw God. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, faith receives this. And so faith says, looks at this, and here's what we're saying, and, and, and faith in your heart says, I believe that. Something, happened. Something could happen right now tonight watching this where a light opens up, and you just say, I believe that. I really believe God loves me without any requirements or any conditions. 
whether I strive for any standard or not. And his love is what I've been needing all this time. I believe it. I see it now. <laughs> that what I've been really trying to get in life and chasing some of these other things and trying to live up to a standard is I've just been looking to be loved. And I got the good news tonight. You got loved. <laughs> yeah. And just maybe, boom, you believe it. Yeah. And if you believe it, like you said just a moment ago, it becomes a part of you. It is your belief. Mm -hmm. And no matter what all these other voices do, it now has become your belief. Yeah. And it will always be a part of you, and it will just grow like a seed. Yeah, and your, your thoughts really come from your beliefs, right? You, it's, yeah. It's, if you're having a lot of negative thinking, uh, sometimes we focus on fighting the thinking, mm -hmm. whereas... If your belief is set on truth, the thoughts will take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, is just trusting, like Glenn was saying, just trusting that God will do it in me, that mm -hmm. that, that that love will it, it, it invade does. your situation. And that's what really, really you know, mind renewal is not a, a, a big complicated word. You look at the right things. Whatsoever things are pure, true, lovely, honest, true, a good report. Those, you look at the truth. The truth is what makes you free. You look at the truth and let the Spirit work with that. Yeah. Let the Spirit do His work and enjoy it. And, and uh, you know, throw away the fable of perfection and enjoy being That's perfectly good. loved in your imperfection. That's really good. It is good. Um, Murray, he's uh, talking some more about, uh, he says, Sometimes I think I'm doing something wrong when I don't feel God's love. But he steps in to correct that to thought. We are so conditioned to look for faults in ourselves, but the gospel is that God loves us at our worst. Absolutely. Paul wrote some beautiful things along these lines. Absolutely. 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 Think he loved of, us while we were yet sinners. Yet sinners. While think we of your worst days. thing you've ever done in life. Okay, I'm going to think of mine. Ooh. Okay, I'm thinking of a really bad one. Right at that moment, God loved me as absolutely as much as he does now, or ever will. He loves me. Yeah. And so... I mean, and Paul talks about that in, in the book of Romans yeah. 8. He says, how much more? While you were yet sinners, he yeah. loved you and died for you. Yeah. How much more <laughs> that you're yeah. children of God? But but I like what, you know, Murray's having some good comments here. The, <laughs> the, the fallen nature goes to what's wrong because it wants to fix what's wrong. Yeah, this is the this is the way the operation of the natural world. That's what Adam and Eve did right off the bat. They saw something wrong, tried to fix it with fig leaves. Yeah. When the whole time before the fall, there was nothing for them to fix. There was they were still naked. Yeah. But it didn't look like something that had to be fixed because they've got the perfect love of God there. Yeah. And they're not on their not on their own. So perfection is is not the absence of flaws. It's the presence of perfect love in the midst of flaws. Yeah. And that's what, that is what makes you free indeed. And you can enjoy God, enjoy your salvation, enjoy life, and enjoy other people. Yeah. You get free of your own self-perfection because of that perfect love. Then you're, you're free of other people's imperfections too. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it's good to how you talk about perfection. That it, it's not the absence of flaws. That's a man-made definition. That, it's not even real. That really perfection is God and us together. That's perfection. That's the perfection. Because, it, of, because of that perfect love. I think a lot of times, myself included, I, even today I had a, a an incident where I had a phone call with a, a business and I tried really hard and I lost my cool and, and, and they've, they really did a wrong thing. Did, they but really I still, I wanted to be gracious. You are sure. always gracious on the phone, and I want to be, <laughs> be like that. But anyway, I lost it, and, and there's a moment Not where, really bad. You didn't throw a fit, but you, he could tell that you well, were. Well, <laughs> it's that, yeah, it's like you said, that yucky feeling yeah. inside where you just know you didn't handle it the best. Well, anyway, I, I could for a minute feel that thought of, You've never changed. You you always yeah, like this. There you go. You, See, you, you let it. your frustration get the best of you, and and yet 
but it's not, that's not true. I have been growing. I have had really great uh, conversations. In fact, right before that one, I had a great, great one. Yeah, I handled been, it great. Very gracious. And so, but I think that idea of perfection, it, it's so tempting to say, oh, I have never changed. I'm, oh, I'm going back to the beginning. But the, but that, that gradual allowing yourself to, to grow. grow and not to be, you know, uh, people without any flaws. All of a sudden, yeah, you people, know, they still have that myth of, of perfection of there being no flaws, and they want to, they want some kind of thing to happen. Show me what do I need? Where's the magic thing to where tomorrow after tomorrow I'll never do what I used to do again. I'll never have those thoughts again. Yeah. It, it doesn't work like that. It's like you say, you know, you. You, 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 you got terse with the person on the phone, but you know, there was a time when that would have been the normal thing for you to do. Yeah. All right. That's and and so it. that's why I say we're all coming from flesh where we were a hundred percent in it <laughs> and we started to come to know God. And then we were like 90% flesh and then 50, you know, and it, and you know, and then it gets to where you maybe only 10% of the time. But like you say, people look at that once in a while, you know, and, and, and they, they, they do what they used to do. And they're like, well, I guess I haven't changed. I guess I'm still like that. No, you've grown. That's become an anomaly now because you've grown. Not your everyday thing. And if it is your everyday thing, that's good news and encouragement for you that it does become less and less fleshly and you, and you, and you increase spiritually. And that's biblical. The Bible says that the world is passing away in all, in the, all of its lust. Right. It's need, it's selfishness, it's hunger, it's wants, it's passions. Passing away. But, but he who does the will of God, the Son of God, Christ in you, uh, shall abide forever. It will outlast all of your, all of your immaturities. It will out, outlast all of your insecurities. It certainly will outlast all your fears and all your pains. You're set for eternity. You're going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> So Jill just arrived. She said, "Sorry, I'm late. I'll, I'll have to watch this." Yeah, again I'll have later. to watch the whole thing later. That's the good thing about each church is that they're they're recorded, and you can still you can pull them up on Facebook. Most people watch it; they don't watch it live. Most people mm -hmm. find it later on. But we appreciate the live conversation. Yeah, this has been good tonight. And, and there's been some very very good points made. So um, so for those people who who really have struggled with abusive relationships or or in and around people who are abusive. We want to encourage and um, just, again, say there's no condemnation for how you feel best to handle no. it. No. Just like, you know, you can believe in healing, but if your body is still sick or hurting, though you, though you believe in healing, um, you know, take the meds if that's what it does. Go to the doctor if that's what helps. Do what you have to do. It doesn't mean that you don't believe yeah. in healing. But there's good news that we that we can grow. Yeah. We can grow in this. But, you know, we, we do what we got to do. And here's the cool thing about God. God, I found, has ways of meeting us wherever we're at. Mm -hmm. You know? God's the one that actually put the, the ingredients in the plants that we make our medicine from. You know? He, he, he's, he, he, he's put natural pain relievers out there. He's put natural healing things in, the, uh, in, in nature. Mm -hmm. Um but we also know that there's 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 supernatural physical healing of the body that does take place. But God meets us everywhere that we're at. You know, I, if my car breaks down, the first thing I'm going to do is pray, speak the word over it. And sometimes, so many times that thing has just started right up and I'm like, whoo, thank you, Jesus. Other times it just didn't. So what do you do? You get the tools out or you call a mechanic or whatever you got to do. You just do what you got to do mm -hmm. and continue to enjoy God and grow day by day, year by year throughout all eternity. This thing is fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. It's been a great e church. This is our first time doing it with our new camera. So let us know what you think of it. And uh, I think it's pretty clear. It's just a lot of things to look at <laughs> for well, me. But uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I don't, did any of y'all notice that I was wearing my, my vintage L.A. Rams shirt? This was from the old days, but when they were true blue and white in L.A. And this is my your old Roman Gabriel jersey. Roman Gabriel, because he's your favorite. He was my childhood hero. Many of you will not know who that is because he was way before your time. But he was the quarterback for the Rams. He's like, he was kind of like 60s. your, your um, what's that called? The, the, the one hero. you, yeah, your hero to look hero. up to. I used to write him letters and he'd send, send really? me pictures, yeah. 
<laughs> he sent you pictures? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, so I cool. Got, I, got, I got autographed pictures and he signed it himself and wrote my name uh, on it. Oh, Jill said, go Rams. <laughs> Kim and Mike Pool said, was wonderful. Love you guys. See you soon. All right. Yes, we will. We'll see yes, you we this will. weekend. Yeah, we got a date with them, don't we? Yeah. Okay, good night, guys. Thanks for coming out late on a Tuesday night. We're going to let you get ready for bed or whatever it is that you're doing. And uh, We will be here next week, same we time, will. same place. Love you guys. Good night.